Okay, good day ladies and gentlemen. So this is now our fifth week for oral communication in context. This is for the first quarter of this semester and we are now already on the fifth week. This will be our video run through for today for this uh, week and I will be using our PDF as a literal run through of your module. Okay, uh, we will be using the PDF because there are some uh, pictures in the module that I cannot transfer to our PowerPoint presentation. So we will use this instead. So the fifth week of oral communication focuses on the types of speech context. Okay. And we will start off here with our weekly target. So the weekly targets of this module number five are to identify the various types of speech context, to describe the type of speech context, and to apply the basics of talking before a crowd or a public communication. And as we go on, there is this short activity, try this, wherein you are going to identify whether the statements are true or false. This, I believe, is not part of your answer sheet, but we may work on this together for our own personal exercises. Let's try to identify whether the statements are true and justify them whether they are false. Number one, self-talk is an example of intrapersonal communication. We have already been informed that there are intra and interpersonal communications. When we say interpersonal communication, that is communication with another person, whereas intrapersonal Communication is communication that happens within one's self. So when we do self-talk, we are doing interpersonal communication. Number two, context is an important concept in communication. Con uh, context, again, is one of the elements of communication. We have already learned that. And we know that the speaker and the listener, or the sender and the receiver, should at least get the same context in order for them to be able to understand the communication and to communicate with each other effectively. Number three, interpersonal communication is usually a face-to-face -face exchange between the speaker and the listener. In the past, in our pre-pandemic days, and even until now, face-to-face -face exchanges are very common examples of interpersonal communication. However, Recently, interpersonal communications are not limited only to face-to-face -face exchanges. We are now limiting our face-to-face -face, uh, meetings. So, uh, however, we continue with our interpersonal communication through the use of our internet and our and various communication portals. Number four, intrapersonal communication makes a person lose his composure in unwanted situations. This is not considered correct because sometimes we need self-talk. We need self-motivation in order for us to boost our confidence rather than lose our composure. Number five, small group communication involves five to ten people communicating with each other. When we say small group, of course, that is more than just three people, but it should not be more than number of people that can be counted with your fingers. So small group communication would involve indeed at least around five to ten people. Number six, there are no misinterpretations in the communication process. We have already understood that, that, that there are barriers which uh, hinder effective communication. And if these barriers are not controlled, they may result to misinter Applications. Number seven, in, <clears throat> in public communication, a party speaks to a group of people. Yes, but that group of people should be a big group of people. Otherwise, if they are countable, they may be considered just a small group communication. Number eight, interpersonal communication has a therapeutic effect on lonely people. Interpersonal or talking with another person, one purpose of communication that we have learned before 
is emotional expression. People really need to burst out what they feel. And the best way for them to express this is to communicate it with another person. And that would be interpersonal communication. Number nine, diet communication involves two people. Correct. Number 10, self-talking in the presence of other people will make them think that you are insane. Well, of course, we can have self-talking, which is without uh, verbal or without oral expression. Or we may have self-talking with open and voiced uh, communication. If we do our self-thinking in our mind, then we may not be considered insane. But sometimes, you know, there are people who really cannot stop doing self-talking with voiced expressions. So they would think that you are insane. Okay? Num uh, next part of your module, ladies and gentlemen, is your activity number one. Study the images in the page and answer the questions that follow. Okay? So we have four images here. The first image here is of two people probably talking with each other. So there's a cup of coffee. Is that a cup of coffee? And then a letter on the table. The second picture is one woman facing her reflection in the mirror. The third picture is probably a priest or a preacher standing on the pulpit, most probably doing a sermon or a talk to a group of audience. And lastly, we have here five people communicating with each other around a small table. Here are the guide questions which we would like to answer based on the four pictures that we have presented. Number one, what scenarios Scenarios are you familiar with? Describe each. So I have already given you a short description of what the pictures were. Number two, how does communication take place in each picture? If you notice, now there are different types of communications in these different pictures. We have a dyad or one-to-one -one communication in number one. We have a intrapersonal communication in number two. We have a public communication, one person speaking to a big group of people in number three. And in number four, we have five people sharing the ideas, sharing information with each other in a small group communication. Number three, who are involved in each scenario? Next, we proceed to activity number two. What would you tell yourself in the following situations? Number one, your childhood friend whom you have not seen for a long time arrived suddenly. So what would you probably tell yourself? This is just a talk, uh, a self-talk activity. Try to reflect on the answers to these questions. Number two, you see your favorite Chanel bag, or sorry, you see your favorite Chanel bag inside the display of a boutique. Number three, you are about to report a topic in class when an emergency happened at home. Number four, you see a vehicular accident while crossing the street. Number five, you see an enemy who once disgraced you in public. Number six, you are about to crack a joke in front of your classmates when your girlfriend called you. Number seven, you are watching the climax part of your favorite movie when your little nephew suddenly turned off the TV. Number eight, your father is working abroad and unexpectedly arrived home. Number nine, you see an old woman crossing the street alone. Number ten, you see a 1,000 peso bill on the street while you are walking. So what would you probably tell yourself when you are put in these 10 situations? Part B. Match the situation in column A with the appropriate type of speech contest in column B. Number one, a businesswoman talking to herself. So this is obviously intrapersonal communication. Number two, two people talking is interpersonal communication and at the same time may, cons may be considered as a dyad. Number three, a team leader talking to his teammates may also be interpersonal and considered small group communication. 
A guidance counselor giving advice to a student is an interpersonal communication that falls under diet. Number five, the president giving a speech in SONA is a public communication. Number six, a valedictorian delivering her valedictory address in a graduation program is considered a public communication. Number seven, a couple talking about a wedding anniversary celebration may be considered a dyad. Again, let me take note that public communication, small group, and dyad communications are all types of interpersonal communication. So when we answer A, B, or C, that automatically makes them part of letter D. Next, number eight, a group of teachers in a small school talk, taking turns in suggesting some innovations in the school's improvement. So we have a group of teachers that would be letter B, small group. Number nine, a group of students talking about their upcoming oral presentation is also considered in, sorry, interpersonal communication, but falls under small group communication. And number 10, a problematic teenager talking to himself, because it's a self-talk, no, no, no other people involved, is considered intrapersonal communication. Okay? So I hope you are able to take note of the answers which we gave you in this video presentation. Now, the main idea of this module is this part here, which is your keep this in mind part, wherein you are going, uh, the module discusses the important topics that we must consider, we must remember in oral communication. Context is the first idea here, and it refers to an external and personal or public consideration that help people understand the true meaning of any utterance or discourse. So context is like the background, the prior knowledge, the environment, both physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, the overall aspect of what surrounds the person, the speaker, the sender, or the receiver, or listener. Then, then we also have here, sorry, the types of speech context. We have first intrapersonal communication. Then secondly, we have interpersonal communication. So again, what is intrapersonal communication? Intrapersonal communication is talking to oneself or a communication process that takes place within one person. Some of the most common examples that we have here in pictures are contemplating on the course you want to pursue. If you just contemplate on it within yourself, you are talking to yourself. You are doing intrapersonal communication. You, uh, intrapersonal communication may also be seen in congratulating yourself for a job well done. Also, it may be considered when you are having committed a serious mistake and wanting to appease yourself. Or sometimes it could also be when you are thinking about a perfect place for a first date. So these are only few examples that uh, could possibly stand for intrapersonal communication. For as long as you're talking, reflecting, or uh, thinking within you, communicating within yourself, that is considered intrapersonal communication. The second type of communication that we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is interpersonal communication, which involves talking to one person or a limited number of people. This requires you to adjust your speech to suit the character and personality of the person or the people that you talk to. Of course, because this does not involve you alone only, this involves already another entity, you will have to consider the context, you will have to consider what the other person already knows. Kung intrapersonal communication lang, you can be who you want to be because you're just talking to yourself, you're of the same level. However, when you do interpersonal communication, you'll have to consider the person that you are speaking to, the person that you are listening to, the in na sila nga level versus sa imo nga level. Because not all of us are of the same level, 
or context. Okay? So, consideration for the other participant is necessary in interpersonal communication. Then, your module focuses on the types of interpersonal communication. Diet communication, which is an interpersonal communication that takes place between two persons, and small group communication, which focuses or happen between three or more people. Okay? In a small group communication, you often have one who acts as a leader or facilitator. This person can be appointed by the group or initiated by a person who has the ability to facilitate the discussion among the participants. So when we go back first to the diet communication, because only two people are involved, then it would be easier to control this communication. There would be easier uh, understanding from whom or who shall be speaking and who shall be listening. Whose turn is it to talk? But however, in small group communication, there are already multiple speakers there are multiple audience which is why somebody should stand as a facilitator in order to organize whose turn it is to speak examples of small group communication here are a group of a group consisting of members discussing the points to highlight in their thesis defense another we have few homeroom officers exchanging ideas on how to make their Christmas party fun. So when it involves around 3 to 15 people, all having their roles to talk and all taking the roles also to listen, we consider that a small group communication. This usually is a two-way communication because there is somebody who speaks and there is a people who listen. Everybody has a chance to speak and everybody has a chance to listen. Third type of communication highlighted in your module is the public communication, which involves communicating to a wide group of people with very varied traits, backgrounds, interests, and persuasions. Therefore, it requires a lot of background explanation and in expressing your ideas. This type of communication also requires you to avoid topics or discussions that may be understandable to only a select few. This is perhaps the case that we are facing right now <clears throat> online with the different bashes, with the different uh, debates that happen regarding our choice of presidents to be or for our choice in the upcoming election. When we post in social media, we are doing public communication because it involves a wide group of people all able to access your expression, all able to see your post, but from different traits, backgrounds, interests, and contexts. So may mga grupong dilaw, may mga grupong pusha, may mga grupong blue, may mga grupong pula. And all of them see a post if you do it in public on social media. Which makes this post therefore an example of public communication. Dera, inaday yun magwa nga may mga misinterpretations, may mga ma-respond positively, may mga ma-contradict man sa inyong statements. Because you are facing people from different contexts. Examples of public communication in your module are delivering a graduation speech, joining in speech competitions, such as oration and declamation or debate, delivering campaign speeches during elections. And number four, the fourth type of communication is mass communication, 
which refers to communication that takes place through television, radio, newspapers, magazines, books, billboards, internet, and other types of media. Actually, mass communication is an extended version of public communication. This is still public communication. The only thing that makes it different from public communication is the channels by which it is delivered. Because public communication in the traditional way is delivered to a group of people expected to be present at the very moment of the communication. That's why ang isang post kina, debate contest, graduation, grand rally, meaning may tao, may crowd sa tubang mo. And you're speaking to this crowd. But when this crowd scatters around the world and you use a type of portal, not just like these magazines, books, internet, and many other forms of mass media in order to reach them out, you are doing mass communication. Okay? Example, an activist activist expressing his sentiments about social issues through a TV interview. However, actually, uh, may isa pag no. Mass communication, as it traditionally is known, is one way. Meaning, ma-express mo ang iyong feelings, ma-reach mo ang madamo ng tao through these different mass media portals. No, but you can hardly consider feedback. Hindi ka makapatun sang replies. Traditionally, however, subong, you know, with the help of the internet, we can already do communication with the other people around the world using media, using mass media, and gather, you know, create conversations, gather information from them. So it's not just one-sided. It's not just one way now. It has already become an open communication. To sum up, we have here the sh- summary of the major contents in this week. Communication is public speaking or situation in which one speaker addresses ma- many listeners. However, it communication may be classified into different types based on the number of participants in the process. Okay. So here we are going to work on your first uh, assessment activity, activity number three, fill me in. Describe the type of speech contest using the table below. Write your answer in your activity notebook. You may make your own personal answers on this table. Okay, you are of course using your activity or your answer sheet. So example, what is intrapersonal communication short description communication that happens within oneself example situation a reflection on the activities of the module okay that would be one example of your answers for this activity number three so we have how many items here uh four major types and interpersonal communication divided into dyad and small groups. So that makes one, two, four, five. Okay? Five items for activity three. Activity four. Write your possible communication and conversation that would take place in the given situations. Then identify the type of speech context present in the conversations. So in your module, I guess there are two uh, spaces given. The first longer space would be for you to write down possible communication that may occur. And then the second smaller space is for you to identify the type of speech context present in the conversation. Example, for number one, some artists are having a gallery show of their paintings in SM City. So uh, example for that, uh, what would be possible conversations that would happen during this event okay then what speech context would be happening or is the type of conversation number two there's a live concert in the town plaza 
Number three, there is a Zumba dance every morning in your parent life. Number four, two best friends are talking about their dream future. Number five, a vendor and consumer in the market. Number six, a father watching news report on TV. Number seven, the barangay captain is having a meeting with the barangay officials. Number eight, rural health doctors conducting an orientation to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Number nine, a mother instructing her five children of their assigned house chores. And number ten, a call center agent talking to a customer. So, if you are part of these conversations, what would be the conversations? Yun yung ilagay nyo dun sa unang blank. Unang blank space sa inyong answer sheet. Then, sa pangalawang uh, blank space, you are going to identify whether that is intrapersonal, dyad, small group, public, or mass communication. Okay? Amula ang isulat nyo dali sa activity number 4. Then, activity number 5. Observe or participate in any interaction at home, in the market, or in another setting. State the topic or topics of the interaction and identify which speech contest in the interaction illustrates. Write your observations in your notebook. Uh, this number 5 activity it does not appear, I think, in your answer sheet. Let's try to check. Cannot memorize the entire answer sheet. Okay, it's not here. Your next activity for week number five is activity number seven. However, you can do activity five and activity six as a form of exercises. Okay, so in activity number seven, you are going to write in column D two sample conversations taken from a movie, a series, a storybook, or any other printed or non-printed materials appropriate to the type of text identified in column A. That's why we have two boxes per uh, item in column A. You may cut them out or you may copy them you know, in your answer sheet. I think you have enough space in your answer sheet to include the conversations. Don't make the conversation too long. Just uh, cut out or lift up a part of the conversation so that it would fit in the available space. Now, we have intrapersonal, interpersonal, dyad, small group, public communication, mass communications, examples. Okay? So identify two com uh, conversations that fall under interpersonal, com intrapersonal communication, uh, interpersonal, and so on. Okay. Now here in the last activity, number eight, ladies and gentlemen, this is not part of your answer sheet anymore, but you may do this as an exercise for your own consumption. And your module number five and over here thank you very much no, for joining this very short video run through wala na ni damo ang sugpon sugpon because we need to at least get the gist of the module only para hindi man ta makakatalaka no kung gina discuss pagid naton ang laman sang aton nga mga modules very basic ang content sa module number 5 simply the type of speech context no kun madumduman naton may apat we have inter, intra, personal, interpersonal, uh, public communication, and mass communication. So once again, thank you very much for joining or for watching this short video run through for module number five in your oral communication in context subject. Thank you everyone and God bless you all.